All right, today we're looking at the essential question, how do massive objects move in gravity fields? And what we're going to do is calculate theoretically what is the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth. And to do that, we're going to sort of combine Newton's law of universal gravitation and Newton's second law of motion. So Newton's law of universal gravitation tells us the force of gravity between two massive objects is equal to the product of their mass times this constant of proportionality, is Newton's universal gravitational constant, and then divided by the distance between those masses squared. So that describes how strong gravity is. It's directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance. Newton's second law of motion, and we saw both of these sort of equations yesterday, where we we're kind of looking at the difference between gravitational mass and inertial mass. And so this is, you know, um, Newton's second law of motion, which says that the force equals mass times acceleration. And because we're talking about gravity, the force due to gravity equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So in like algebra, we know that if something is equal to something else and something else is equal to that same thing, then they must be equal to each other. Like if this is equal to the force of gravity, and this is equal to the force of gravity, they must be equal to each other, right? Like we could substitute this in for the force due to gravity in this equation, right? So we sort of set that equal to each other is oftentimes the way that we, we think about it. And so I'm gonna do that working in this cloudy part of the, the chalkboard over here. All right, so let's set um, mass times the acceleration due to gravity equal to G M M over R squared. And this is your quiz right here. This is what we're going to do for our quiz today. We're going to have mass times the acceleration due to gravity equal to G M M over R squared. Trying to solve theoretically what is the acceleration due to gravity on this planet. So, mathematically speaking, we can divide both sides by lowercase m. m divided by m is one. One times the acceleration due to gravity is just that. And then m divided by m on this side is also one. And one times pm over r squared is pm over r squared. One times m is itself. So, we effectively cancel the mass. The setup here is that we've got planet Earth, which has mass. We've got some object on its surface, lowercase m. And we're saying, you know, what's the gravitational attraction for this figure? Right? What's the gravitational attraction for like you sitting here on the surface of the Earth? You're a small mass compared to the mass of the Earth. How strong is gravity, okay, theoretically speaking? There's other experiments we could conduct to determine this, you know, value experimentally. We can measure, you know, how fast things fall or how fast the pendulum, you know, sort of oscillates. There's, there's equations that sort of describe that. But this is just theoretical. Just based on theory. All right, so um, we've solved it. There you go. The acceleration of gravity is equal to this. And now let's substitute in some values. And so G. Capital G. So we're solving for it's like lowercase g. Um, that's local g. That is the, the gravity field strength like around a given planet. This is capital G, a universal gravitational constant that never changes anywhere in the universe. Its value is 6.67 by 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. You already have that in the journal somewhere. So we're going to multiply that by the mass of the Earth. Okay. I'll show it like this. So the acceleration due to gravity is equal to 6.67 by 10 to the negative 11. The units are Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. The mass of the Earth, everybody knows, is 5.7 by 10 to the 24 kilograms divided by. The separation distance squared. So, how far away from the Earth are you? E learners, how far away from the Earth are you? Oh, 
consulting this figure, you might say, well, if I'm this lowercase m on this planet Earth here, not to scale, then I'm touching it, so I'm zero distance away. And that's true for this bit of the Earth, like this part of the Earth, you're like not separated from it at all. What about like this part of the Earth over here? Far away from that part of the Earth, and about this part, this part, you know, so like the whole Earth here underneath our feet. And how do we sort of deal with it that there's different parts of the Earth, different places away from us? Like, it's kind of like what we might suspect just sort of intuitively. Like, can't we like average the position of all of the Earth underneath our feet? You know, where, where's a sensible place to sort of say that all of that mass acts? And so this is an idea of the center of gravity, the center of mass. Oftentimes in physics, we can make a simplification where, you know, especially when it's a uniform object, it's sort of one when we're really allowed to. Um, we can say that all of the mass of planet Earth is concentrated at its center. Okay, so it's like how far away from you, how far away are you from the Earth that you're standing on, sitting down on the chair on? Um, you are the radius of the Earth away from the Earth, right? Like we're, we're taking all of the 5.97 by 10 to the 24 kilograms. Sorry for that. We're taking all those kilograms and we're saying it does. It's not spread out over the whole volume of the Earth. It just exists here at Earth's center. And so the center of the Earth is a distance r, called the radius of the Earth. This symbol here means Earth. It's a circle with a cross through it. So the radius of the Earth, everybody remembers, is 6.37 million meters. Square that. So here is one meter. And 6,370,000 of these down to get to the center of the Earth. And that's what we can sort of assume. That's how far away we are from that. And so that's everything you need. Um, that's like the quiz, okay? Solving theoretically what is the acceleration of the gravity on this planet? That's how you calculate it. You multiply this number times this number. That's a 24 there, divided by. The radius of the Earth squared. So this this really shows you how to calculate theoretically the gravity field on any object. If you know the mass of the object whose gravity field you're calculating and how big it is, its, it's radius, then you can calculate the gravity field on that object. So a planet like Jupiter has more mass. So you say, okay, well that would make its gravity field go up, but it's also bigger, and so we're sort of spreading that that mass out over a greater volume. So the bigger the, the planet is, the more spread out the gravity, like this is in the denominator, it's squared. So this is making the gravity field you know, weaker, right? The bigger the planet is, the actual the weaker the field is because think about the surface is further away from the center, right? So it should make sense like, okay, if we concentrate everything at the center, the gravity gets weaker, the further away we go, those objects on the surface of Jupiter would be much further away than like on Earth where the radius is smaller. So you might suspect, well, does Jupiter's size sort of dominate that, or does its mass dominate that? Like, would Jupiter have a bigger gravity field than Earth or a smaller one? Do you think the gravity is stronger or weaker on Jupiter? You say, well, it's, it's got this going for it. It's more massive, but it's also bigger. You got to square that. So, like, is it, is it much more massive compared to how much bigger it is than, than the Earth, or what sort of wins there? The known value for this on Earth should agree with what you calculated. Right, like you, you maybe know what this number is because you've studied physics before, or we've talked about it in this class. And now, when you crunch these numbers, you get the answer to your quiz. Now, everybody should have it down, right? Everybody got the answer for their quiz because this is now we're going to grade it. See how well you did. So try to type this in your calculator. If you got a calculator, even if you got a phone and has calculating capabilities on it, try to try to crunch you know, those numbers in the phone there and see if you don't get an answer that's like, oh yeah, that familiar number. Or is it well, that's not a familiar number to me still. But it should be eventually we want to say, like, oh, that's the known gravity field spectrum number. And once we have that value, we can say, well, what do you think it is for Jupiter? What do you think it is for Saturn? What do you think it is for the sun, the moon? Again, we can look up, you know, a table of values and, you know, find, you know, the, the solar system especially is very well studied, you know, this class are just like 
hey, all we're going to study is the solar system. It wouldn't be the greatest unsolved mysteries in the universe. It would be, we know it very well. I mean, there are some unsolved mysteries about our solar system. Claim to still know, and I would argue we're, we're more ignorant about it than we are knowledgeable about it. But but we know it a lot better than we know everything else. You know, it's, it's probes to every planet. Um, you know, we, have, we have very good descriptions about sort of how our solar system works, but um, there's still a lot of you know, studies. But we could look up these values for you know, every, everything in our solar system. All right, so anybody have a, an answer there? You learned if you get one. How about you two? Put it down in the comments below. Nine point something. Let's see what this works out to be exactly. Six point six seven by ten raised to the negative eleven times. 5.97 by 10 to the point fourth divided by open parentheses 6.37 times 10 raised to the sixth squared equals. So if I get 9.8, and then there's more there. And when I go to look at your journal, when I'm reading your journals, I'm going to see did you put what, what more is there? Okay, so I'm expecting you to fill that up. But this way we have 9.8 meters per second squared thereabouts. This calculation gives you, you know, more, gives you a calculator value, right? Where it's not exactly this, but really th those are not important digits anyway. What's important is like, okay, the two significant digits, that's how quickly the earth accelerates things. And so earth accelerates things at 9.8 meters per second, every second something falls. So two ways to sort of, Think about um, Earth's gravity field strength. Sorry to disrupt everybody's sort of new class. If you look at the units of this calculation right here, you can see that meters squared are canceling these meters squared. This kilogram cancels one of these kilograms, so we get newtons per kilogram. Those are the units that we have. Teachers and students, please pardon this interruption. But teachers, one more time, please make sure that you are doing your fourth block attendance. Fourth block attendance, let's make sure that gets done. And if you have those avid students that should be coming out to the senior patio, if you could dismiss the avid students to the senior patio. Thank you. I think that's kind of like just a suggestion. I don't think it's that important, but I just remind them. Maybe, maybe do it then if you don't want to. You know, that's up to you. All right. Well, let's just go ahead and we'll see you next time, YouTube. We got to take attendance.